هو السؤال سؤال الذكاء الاصطناعي وهو سؤال العصر وسؤال الغد كذلك فمن من جانب الذكاء الاصطناعي هل ينبغي ان يقلق الفنانين والمعماريين كذلك وكل من يعمل في هذا الجانب الذي فيه هذا الابداع البشري هل سياتي اليوم الذي تفكر عنه عنا الالات السؤال الآخر إلى أي درجة كانت هذه التكنولوجيا غيرت من أشكال الإبداع الإنساني إلى أي زعزعة حدثت من 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 هذه من هذه التطورات هذه التغيرات السريعة جدا في الأيام الماضية تحدث البعض عن عوالم موازية كأن نحن نعيش في عالمين اليوم سيكون معنا للحديث عن هذا الموضوع الأستاذة مارني بيني وهي قيمة فنية ومختصة في فن المعاصر فلتتفضل حيوها تحية جميلة تستحق The floor is yours Hi everybody Thank you so much for having me here today. I'm excited to talk to you a little bit about what I do uh, which is in I am a curator and I uh, focus in science and technology. And today I'm really excited to explore a little bit with you about the artists that I'm working with, let's just make sure the slide is, um, who are kind of using cutting edge technology, so specifically AI and machine learning to figure out um, many different questions that kind of run the gamut from very philosophical questions to privacy, um, privacy rights, uh, to biases in the uh, technologies that we're implementing now with AI and machine learning that we're just kind of really uh, embracing in our lives right now. So as we go through this presentation and I run through these artists and the different projects that they're doing, I would love for you to consider three of these questions. So one, what does it mean to be human in a world powered by AI? How does our notion of creativity evolve as creatives work with AI and machine learning systems? And how can our relationship with technology help us better understand ourselves and where we are today? So first, I'll start a little bit about what is a curator, just to kind of ground that for, for everyone. So curators craft narratives, and especially if they're cultural curators and people who are working in the arts, obviously there's many histories, long histories that people are, need to consider when they're thinking about new artwork um, and cultural practices that are happening today. So, our job is to create a narrative by taking sort of little bits of culture pieces throughout history and string them together to create narratives. So we have historical context and then context for future and the future arts. And so we can kind of create a linear narrative in some way, shape or form. So it's not always linear, honestly, um, sometimes it's you're connecting different time periods where people might be influenced, artists might be influenced by uh, something that happens, you know, a hundred years past. Some, you know, a current artist might be influenced by something that's that's very old. Um, and there's connections beyond the, like that. You uh, there's connections that the curator is sort of is meant to meld together. As a curator who focuses in, our, in technology and science, my job is to uh, connect those dots to get to where we are now in the creative and technological realm. So a lot of that has to do with innovation. And so when we talk about technology, we think about innovation. And when we talk about um, innovation, uh, it can span the gamut between architecture, uh, printing, you know, everything is always evolving and everything is always evolving in the technical realm and the output and the sort of the mirrors to society are the artists that are working with these types of technologies. 
And what's really exciting is that this always, this push continues to redefine or force people, individuals, and collective societies to redefine who they are and what their values are and why they do what they do. So that's also something to consider as, as I go continue through this talk. So just to talk about a little bit of history, so Leonardo da Vinci, da Vinci um, was an artist in the Renaissance. He uh, and many artists of this time were very much on in the innovative front. They were using science and technology to really push and create a different novel perspective that they showed in a cultural way. So whether that was through drawings or um, artwork, for example, here. So da Vinci was really interested um, in the body and the body, the different uh, perspectives of the body and really trying to get it as real as possible. So he was, would take actually cadavers and um, cut them up so he could understand the muscle structure of the body. So he could better depict that in his work. So this is a really great kind of moment of, you know, in specific in, in medical terms, where the cultural production or output really showcased an artist thinking outside of just art. So he was able to optimize his cultural production, which led to a sort of culture, uh, sort of innovation, like ever, all of the artists were like innovating together um, of this time period and really pushing that envelope. And it also really defined the culture of the time as well. So these, uh, these cultural producers were uh, doing this output that even still today we know, and as artists we use a lot of these perspective um, learnings that we learn from Da Vinci. We learn um, many things. I mean, Da Vinci sort of was a polymath. He knew many, many things. He, he made a, uh, a scuba suit before that even um, existed. So again, this cultural output was a very fruitful time um, and shows the value of artists when they're willing to kind of go outside the box and be innovative. So we can fast forward to 2021. It's a big jump, but um, bear with me. So now technology is very intrinsic in our everyday lives. So we have you know, streaming systems here. We have um, Instagram. We have Google Maps. And they're all powered by machine learning. And all of these machine learning uh, technologies are giving us information constantly. So they're really helping us figure out our next, like where we'll go next on Google Maps, what songs we'll hear. So they're really defining us in individually and also collectively. Because if you kind of put all of that together and have you know, a sort of a broad scope and you have sort of a global initiative that's using Instagram, that really changes the game more than it ever has been changed before. So again, these artists that I'll talk to you about in just a second are doing really important things and asking important questions. So rights to privacy, we'll talk about that. Um, also, who is um, technology optimized for? So who's making the, um, these technologies? Is it, is it, are they for everybody? Is everybody at the table able to say, well, you know what, um, that might be your life, but that's not really my life, or that's not relevant to me. And this is, this is really important because if there isn't this sort of dialogue, then the technology is just optimized for one group. So this is an artist. His name is Reeps One. He is a beatboxer, and he is using technology to unlock a new creative potential for him 
as a beatboxer world champion. So he has worked with Bell Labs, which you might know Bell Labs. They are um, they're, uh, a company that has worked with artists actually for a long time. They hold the most um, uh, no, not, uh, Nobel Prizes that one of you know, that many companies do, and they worked with this artist to basically make an AI version of himself beatboxing. And why this is important is because when he was beatboxing with this AI, he was able to really push his cultural, his, his creativity. He was basically able to work with a version of himself, not someone else, but a version of himself because the AI entity was just trained on his own beatboxing style. So no one else's, it wasn't like a collaboration, but just his. And the AI entity was doing things that he would never do. So it gave him more license to push his own artwork because he was collaborating with the machine and machine learning, which is really interesting to consider when you talk about identity and identity as an artist and what that means. And what does it mean when you're collaborating with an AI entity to create your, uh, to create your work. So this is uh, Lauren McCarthy. She's great. Uh, this is an interesting project that's having to do with AI and privacy and machine learning. So basically what Lauren's done here is uh, with consensual um, participants, she's set up video cameras in these people's houses and, record, and uh, sort of microphones and recording devices so she can function as the Alexa of the house instead of the actual Alexa or Google um, Home. So um, and these are, and Google Home and Alexa are AI entities that learn what you want. So you say, hey Alexa, can you play whatever? Or hey Alexa, what's my calendar? And what Lauren was going for here um, and, dis and exploring was one, where do we draw the line between privacy and, and, um, and uh, convenience? So we give away a lot of our privacy information and our data for convenience, knowing where to go, having our calendars synced with every you know, mobile device that we have. And also she was looking at humans versus machines. And so her as a human, as an artist, being the one that was listening to you in your home or the participants in their home, were they able, was she able as a human to better uh, intuit what, someone would want as opposed to a machine. So it's just really interesting exploration. Um, this is an artist, uh, da Danya Asile, and she is uh, working here with, she's got 14 different um, GAN trained AI entities. And so what she's doing here is she's created these um, characters, in a way, that are visual and also auditory. Uh, they're reciting poetry. And then she slowly uh, infiltrates contemporary uh, media into these characters. And what she's exploring here is she's exploring a collective identity and how contemporary media and new imagery kind of changes a, uh, a memory, uh, a character, uh, an identity, uh, and perhaps a collective identity. And this is a really interesting thing to consider given how much you know, media we're consuming and also considering how much media is kind of dictated by machine learning or, or you know, those algorithms. And these are just questions, you know, this is, this is what I love about art. It's that these just pose questions that are really important for us to ask and consider because we're relying on these technologies so much. So here's the Salvador Dali Museum. And what they did here is they took uh, video footage and auditory footage of Sal Salvador Dali and created a Dali that you can interact with. So he talks to you, you can have a conversation. 
Um, and yeah, it's pretty interesting. Um, and again, it just sort of poses more questions. What, like, what should should we do this? Because when artists die, what does it take away? What does it gain? What's the pros and cons? Is it something that we, we that we want to be doing? Uh, do we want to be doing this for future generations to interact um, with artists that have passed away? And what does that do to you know that artist's identity actually as well? Um, and here is Jason Barnes, who is a musician and he's a drummer. So he lost his arm in, in an electrical accident, and he was not able to drum, and drumming was his passion. So he was able to find um, a, a business that would work with him that made a prosthetic arm. And he uses this arm to drum, and it, and, and it gives him sort of very high capabilities, very fast drumming, things that were, would not be possible if he just had a regular arm. So this is an interesting, you know, it, he's an interesting case where do we, you know, and he and his drum uses machine learning technology so it can so it can hear the music and also he can get a feedback uh, based on how how much he's drumming on the drum set, you know, the, the percussion, like the uh, resistance. So that helps him actually drum real time as a musician. So this is this is an interesting thing to think about. What you know, what does this do to an artist's identity when something's taken away and then something is gained, but it's different? And how does one's identity change with this difference? So I'll leave you with a couple of questions here. Um, so what does what will our individual and collective identities be as we move towards the future? As we co-create and collaborate with machine learning technologies, how will that change us? And how will that change the notion of us? How does that propel us forward? How do we preserve what we want to preserve? Is that even possible? All interesting questions to think about. But technology has always expanded the notion of what's possible. From the dawn of time, Technology has advanced society. Right now, it's just much faster with the technological revolution, and we're utilizing that technology much more so than we did before. So like a, a plow, for example, is a way of, that's a form of um, innovation in technology, but not everyone uses a plow. But probably most people use machine learning in some way, shape, or form, or at least are in a world where that is, is being used a lot. So, um, as I always say, good art creates just more questions at the end of the day. So I'm going to repeat those three questions for you to think about. What does it mean to be a human in a world powered by AI? How does our notion of creativity evolve as creatives work with AI and machine learning systems? And how can our relationship with technology help us better understand ourselves and where we are today. Thank you so much. Uh, we'll just have now a poll, uh, a question for the audience. Uh, if you can just, uh, can you put the question there? Okay. Uh, هل الفن مهدد بسبب الذكاء الاصطناعي؟ Is art under threat because of AI؟ تقدرون تستخدمون ال QR كود للجواب على ال Snow. Okay. خلاص <laughs> do you have any comment on this answer well the 100% no at first was really funny <laughs> i would say that um, no i mean i, I think uh, yeah this kind of reflects how it is you know it, it's complex it's a complex question uh, i think you know 
Ooh, um, I didn't mean to, if I just turn that off. But, um, you know, again, I think technology is always changing things. Does it mean that things are under threat? Not necessarily, but I think that um, possibly for certain perspectives or certain types of mediums, okay. um, perhaps there could be that feeling, but um, I think that I would say uh, no. I no. don't think it does. طيب we have another question. نروح للسؤال الثاني. هل يمكننا التعاون مع الآلات في تشكيل هويتنا المستقبلية? Can we collaborate with machines in shaping our future identity? واضح أنكم متصالحين مع الآلات يعني. So the, 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 I think the most uh, that is yes. Do you have any comment or we take an, a question from you? I like Ilias's comment where he said, look at what we're doing to answer the question. Look at what we're using to answer the question, which is. Have you any questions? Can I have a seat? Hello? Thanks a lot for your uh, talk. That was really informative. Uh, actually, I would like you to answer your own first question, which is, what is it to be human at the age of AI? You mentioned technology, the evolution of technology, technology at the service of humans. But I think today uh, we have the feeling that technology can be out of control. As much as the will, the plow were all under control, uh, they did not have brains on their own. So what is it for you to be human today? Oh, that is a complicated question. <laughs> no, and exactly, I mean, that's the point, right? Um, to ask that question, it's a complex question. And it means different things for different people. There's things that I see, I mean, when we're talking about AI specifically and machine learning specifically, I think there's things that I see that are quite concerning. And um, we've been talking with some colleagues here this week where, um, you know, it's the question, do you create algorithms knowing that they could be used for bad reasons or highlight things that aren't fair for everybody or do you not create them at all? Um, and that's also a really tough question. I think that um, why I'm more positive and optimistic is because I see these artists that are working on these projects that are using these technologies that are showing the problems. Um, he, he, in this discussion, we highlighted a lot of positives and a lot of, you know, um, cr what what is creativity, you know, humans that think that they're, humans are creative. The thought is the creativity separates us from, you know, all other life on the planet. But when we're using AI technologies and machine learning technologies to also be creative, what does that mean to our identity and what we might have thought of as human? So I think it's a really interesting time. I think uh, it's a time where we do need to be careful and more proactive instead of reactive. So I think artists doing these, doing work uh, that's showcasing both, you know, the, the positive things like collaborations with machines and how that you know, further makes our um, creative process more fruitful. I think also the work that's like Lauren's work where there's a lot of questions about privacy and um, privacy rights that we give away knowingly or not knowingly uh, for convenience and, um, and, and larger companies. So I think to answer more succinctly, uh, as long as we are aware and collectively kind of make some ground rules. And um, and again, it's that, that idea of constant evolving. Like we will, humans are constantly evolving in the natural world anyway, and technology and technological, technological advances and innovation is something that we have to navigate throughout, you know, through the, oh, oh, I mean, since the dawn of, t of time. Um, so, this is something else that we will have to navigate um, and quickly because it is a very quickly moving, quickly impactful thing. 
So as long as we do that mindfully, um, as much as we can, more so, way more so than we have uh, to up to this point, I would say, then um, it creates more opportunity for posit positive change. Any last comments? Hi there. Uh, I want to go back to Silver Dali and how they actually represent him in terms of, you know, reliving him again. I think that will also Im kind of an impact on the artist after his death and probably actually said the word about maybe it will actually affect his legacy. Maybe it will affect the way we see him. And like in the future for the next generation. What's your intake on that? Because um, they actually started doing it with the music industry, with uh, with Tupac. Uh, a couple of years ago, they did this concert with, you know, Four Dimension and all that, and he's starting to dance and, and sing. But would that be uh, like some kind of a danger for the, the newcomer uh, of artists or not? A danger in the sense of that... Their legacy might be changed. Uh, you know? yeah, yeah, so... Yeah, I mean, I I think for sure when when you're having, I mean, you're whoever writes this AI, you know, the coding and the data points. I mean, that's actually who is creating the person or this AI entity. So then you run into the problem of okay, well then, ev you know, future generations will think that this historical figure is this AI entity when it's actually not at all, really, or, you know, of course, parts, parts, parts. But, um, but yeah, I mean, that's a really big consideration and concern, and, and I, I, I'm not sure that there really is a solution for that, really. I mean, unless you, I mean, I, no, I, re I really actually don't know, because you can't possibly get, you know, that many people working on a project to really make it um, more, more accurate. I mean, maybe if it was very close members of, the artist's family and close inner circle that also was a collaborative process like that, perhaps. But um, I think that would have to be a really collective, um, collaborative project for it uh, to um, really give, um, give really life to what the artist and who the artist was. Thanks, that was a great Good. question. Any last comment? نشكر الأستاذة مارني بيني ويعني أرجو أن تعطيها تحية عظيمة على هذه المحاضرة. Thank you very much, Mr. Marni.